You take those two right turns, and when they make the final turn, you can begin to hear the crowd and the noise of the open end of the stadium. Here it is, the most exciting 25 seconds in college football. All right, hello and welcome to another edition of the Two Right Turns podcast. Once again, filling in as your host, my name is Ross Taylor, coming to you here from Studio C in the Clemson Athletics Branding Institute. And we have a jumbo edition of the in-season Two Right Turns podcast this week. I want to let these guys introduce themselves, if you don't mind, give us your name, number, position, hometown, and let's go uh, for for the theme of this episode, let's go your general playing weight this season, if you had to guess. Pay page. <laughs> Number 55, I'm from Greensboro, North Carolina, and my general playing weight is around 310 to 315. I'm Peter Woods. I'm number 11. Uh, I play defensive end. Um, I think I think my general playing weight, like three, 315 to 320. Demonte K. Park, D-Tackle, Hearts, South Carolina. Uh, my general playing weight is 315. Only reason I'm asking, we got almost literally half a ton's worth of uh, of Clemson Tigers production in the room here today. So, you know, I said this was a jumbo edition. Well, we're going to start there. We got to talk about the jumbo package a little bit, given that we've got some of the guys in the room. So uh, we're going to go to the monitor here, and I will implore our <laughs> listeners that are listening via audio to make sure to watch us on YouTube and Clemson Plus so you can see what these guys are seeing. So here we are in Winston-Salem, and so, uh, you know, for the last several years, the jumbo package, the fridge package, has been a, a frequent uh, point of conversation with Clemson fans. Yeah. They're wondering, when are we going to see it this year? So um, I tell you what, uh, Peter, why don't you tell me what we're looking at here? You feel me? I'm trying out there. I, I was thinking they're going to call it timeout, but now I, I got the kickout block. He ain't really wanting none, so he just folded up. Phil got in the zone. Is silly, bro. You like it to Selly? Talking about myself? Yes. I don't think he I ain't got seen the scream. Oh, here we go, I think, bro. Hold up. He got Ow. the tweaking after. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so we're looking at this here, and, you know, uh, Peter, you got the look at the safety here, but on yeah. the television broadcast, <laughs> Dusty Dvorak, the, uh, the game analyst, was talking about the job that DeMonte did, kind of sealing off the edge from the tight end spot right there. DeMonte, what was kind of your key there, and why were you able to be so successful in opening that hole for Phil? Um, I mean, we just been talking about it all week, just winning my gap, um, just coming off fast and low and hard, just winning that gap. How excited were you all for this play to be called and get that opportunity this year? Actually, I was I was on the sideline. They was talking about uh, it was about to call something else, and I was just I started yelling fridge, and that's when I looked at Peter and we was right beside each other, and then they just called it, and we was right there to run on the field. I ain't gonna lie, I was too excited. I'd be, I be trying to run that thing fourth and ten. Like, <laughs> I, like, put me out there, you know what I'm saying? But no, I I figured when we got down on the goal line and the, and the down started ticking by, if they didn't get it, they was gonna call it. So I, I was ready. I had my helmet on and everything. I already knew it was gonna be a touchdown. Woulda, woulda. Yeah. And Peyton, they sent uh, Harris Sewell out there, so it was a different 55 out there on this play. But for you, as a defensive lineman, seeing some of your other guys yeah. from your group get that kind of shine, what was that like for you? Yeah, I wish they would have seen me run on the field. I ran on the field right after I see him clean his clock. <laughs> I just thought like, he gave me so much energy after that. I was so excited for both of them to be on the field. I feel bad for 45, too. Nick Anderson's been a really productive player in this league, good player at Wake Forest, but I just I don't think that's a matchup that uh, anybody would be particularly looking forward Never. to seeing number 11 coming downhill nah. like that. Never. Nah. <laughs> Now, I, I am curious. So I mentioned all the discussion about the Jumbo Package. One of our reporters on Wednesday evening during Coach Sweeney's media update on Zoom was like, hey, you know, who's working in the Jumbo Package this year? We, we haven't seen it at all. And literally, you know, three, four days later, here we are running it. How much lobbying goes on from defensive players to get offensive snaps? Like, are you having to, you know, mow Coach's yard or do his laundry for a month to try to get some favor to, to get those snaps? How does that work? You know what I'm saying? I think – you know what I'm saying? He just take the two best athletes <laughs> and put them on the offensive side of the ball and then tell them to go block for, for the offensive athletes. And that's just what happened. And then Peyton, you know oh. what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> Correct me if I'm wrong. That's what I, I don't think happened. that's true at all. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we have – oh, I can't even say that. Never mind. I'm about to say upcoming package, but never mind. There's no deep freezer coming soon. <laughs> <laughs> Is that what they call a deep freezer? 
Oh, stay boy. tuned for that. It sounds like so. Uh, we're gonna move on to another reaction video and all this talk about offensive snaps. I want to get to your actual day jobs. We've got 19 lined up on a on a center here. And let's watch what uh, Big K part does here. Demonte, what's going through your mind here? Bro, that's not even fair, bro. <laughs> well, what's going through my mind? Yep. Um, I just know I got backside A. Um, we just we just practice all week, just getting vertical. Um, and I knew that I had to just run my feet and just be physical and violent. That's all I knew. I mean, you made a yeah, habit bro. of doing this. In the last 12 months, you've done something similar to centers at North Carolina and Notre Dame, which you did to Wake Forest here. We've got a tweet on the screen from Executive Director of the Senior Bowl, Jim Nagy. Uh, we've cleaned it up a little bit because this is a family show, but just a reminder, Demonte Capehart is a grown man. Uh, Peter, I know you talked about it with the media early in the season. I mean, Demonte's heavy hands, is that developed? Is that natural? I mean, how unique is the way he's able to physically move people like that? Uh, very unique. I mean, if you just look at our reaction on the play, like, I was just standing there. Like, I was excited, but I was just like, wow. Like, that was, like, my reaction because it's like, how is you doing that to another grown oh man? Like, oh just, <laughs> just, yeah, like, we, just that weird. He got back there so fast, I couldn't even, I didn't even know what happened. Yeah, I was, I was confused. Was but then I knew it was, like, just Cuddy just doing what Cuddy do. You know what I'm saying? And that's just, that's just what it was. Joe, let's roll on to the next one. Um, this was early in the game. Now, Peter, coming back from injury, trying to get your feet kind of back under you. To be able to have an impact tackle for loss like that early in the game, how good did that feel? And do you do you feel like you're kind of back to being yourself? I do. I do feel like I'm back to being myself. I think these last two games have been, like, like very monumental. And, like, my progress is coming back from, like, a lower body injury like that. So I feel good. Like, I'm ready to go. You know, I got – got them dogs around me so it just it just helped me with my confidence and Peyton and Demonte I'm curious for a guy like Peter who's able to have so much versatility and move around do people underappreciate how hard it is to do what he does in terms of being able to play inside and then also go and play on the edge yeah, like that it's so hard like yeah we gotta it, we really appreciate Peter because he knows he, he's just a smart player you know what I'm saying so his knowledge on both like inside and out it helps us like just being able to unfold in the game. Yeah, I know it's hard. Like coming from a double team, then having to cover a wheel route <laughs> at three twenty. That's, that's it's crazy. Yeah, that's tough to do. So yeah. I can, got a lot of my respect. Yeah, I can imagine there's there's not a lot of guys capable of doing that. I do want to ask you guys talked about, of course, the the best athletes on defense being asked to play offense. If you could take one athlete on offense right now and ask him to play a couple defensive snaps, who are you taking? Ronan Hannafin does not count. Right. Uh, right, right. Hold up. Let's think about this before we just man. answer. Yeah, it's, it's, it's some the, good. It's some good. You feel me? I'm uh, taking I'm Adam Randall, an outside linebacker. You lost it. Hold <sighs> up. Hold up. Let me cook. I'm taking Dietrich Pennington healthy and put him in at the zero. Putting guard. him at the zero tick. <laughs> no score. <laughs> Dietrich at the zero. Hold on. Hold Pete. up. I'm Adam Randall and putting him at Sam Backer. And tell him to come off the edge. Oh my God, Adam looks crazy. <laughs> <laughs> Adam as an edge rusher, I think yeah. Phil would be a good linebacker. Well, linebacker, and running back—that's like an easy, yeah. like you know what I'm saying. Like I'm thinking, like True. Blake Miller. And what? <laughs> yeah, <I'm>, like <laughs> the end. Like he's six seven. Oh yeah, three hundred pounds. That's a DN. Mm -hmm. Like that's a DN prototype body. I think that's. I think those are like the major ones. It's one ahead. more we we missing somebody. I mean, K fast. I put him at corner. Safety. He's a safety. Tone at safety. corner. Tone at corner. Yeah. Yeah. Tone, yeah. Receiver at corner. K could be a good safety. Yeah. That's like a. That's like a high school and like safety quarterback. Yeah. Like y'all are gonna make us miss the one platoon era before they started making offense and defense two different groups back oh my in gosh. The, uh, the middle of the last century so nah, literally we've talked a little bit about what happened on the field at wake forest <laughs> but we want to talk about what was going on in the locker room too what do we got going on here post game i ain't eating on no, no. i'm just saying Cuddy had Cuddy had five Bro, stop capping him Bro, five And he had to hand him out Just Chris for the video Back on the bus <laughs> so, that, so that the video could go, So that the video Could go right Cuddy handed out All There's the boxes no the way. After he took about five Out of no, each box No, that's cap Why y'all capping like this On camera? That's just what I saw Oh my god 
But no, uh, it's all guys. fun to win, win at Wake Forest. I seen there. Peyton Page eat five. Yeah, we ain't gonna talk, we're not talking about eating habits, bro. We all, chill, chill, chill. We all fall short. Five burgers on the now, plane. Now, this was a great it's time crazy. right there, though, for sure. Here's the thing. Y'all can get on each other about this. I'm 190 pounds, and I don't play football, and I could easily house five donuts from Krispy Kreme in like 30 seconds. So but nobody needs sick, to feel bad sick, about that it's here. Sick, it's sick, sick, but, it's but sick burgers, burgers is like, different. Bro, burgers are different. Hold on now. If you want to do that, Cuddy had five donuts, <laughs> like, four oh. burgers, and three doubles. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my, bro, you're a cat. That ain't got nothing to do with me. He had three ginger ale, three burgers. Ginger ale, bro. <laughs> Peter, bro, come on. Do we need to get on Peter right now? I will bring Peter. I, I bring this up because it's a little bit of local flavor to Winston Salem, right? Because mm-hmm. Krispy Kreme started there, but you know, also Peyton. Part of the reason we wanted to include you here today. I mean, this is not far from home for you. Bring, uh, Greensboro kid. You know, you were back in your home area. How many? Uh, how many friends and family did you have in attendance? And is there something kind of special to playing on the road back in your home area? Oh yeah, it was most definitely a better vibe out there. Have a fun. But I had about thirty three people came to the game. Okay. So that's love. About, a lot of people. I was taking pictures after the game for about 30 minutes. That's a whole lot of negotiating for tickets with teammates, too, isn't it? <laughs> yeah. Actually, nah, everybody was really smooth with it because they already know that was my like, city. So a lot of people won't come to that game anyway. So they just go ahead and let me have the tickets. That's good looking out. Yeah. I will say, shout out to our fans. Um, oh, yeah. I fans, mean, Clemson fans, shout out. Clemson fans travel, they show up everywhere, and it was particularly shout evident out. in. Yeah. Uh, a legacy stadium on, on yeah. Saturday. So, yes, sir. Uh, what does it mean to you guys to have a fan base that travels like that and will ride with y'all everywhere? We Blessings. appreciate it. We yeah, appreciate we it. We need it. It looked, of, about, it looked about 50 50 out there. Like, them, nah, for real, about, for real. Them third downs be, we need them. Yeah. They home game, we had no, like, it was like, it wasn't noise like a home game, but it was like noise. Like, we was like, at least at a neutral site. You mm-hmm. know what I'm saying? Like, as far as going out there on a the third down, getting a stop, like, the energy was. Pro Clemson, yeah. for the most part. So we got the donuts here, but we also got one more celebration video, and I need you guys to break it down for me. This is a compilation of Clemson staff and coaches dancing <laughs> afterward. <laughs> now, I, I need a breakdown from all three of you on who some of the better dancers on staff are and who needs some work. I ain't going to lie. Coach Luke came out there with that swag, though. Like, he had the hoodie on. Hold on, I gotta see everybody first. Yeah, I ain't gonna speak too soon. I really, I was vibing. Coach Easy get lit every time. I know how he go get. Yeah, okay. He need, Coach Khan needs to work for, for sure. Okay. <laughs> see you feel me? He got he, he lit. just swag. Coach Rich, I think he got it. Yeah, CJ Spiller. Yeah, no. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I ain't gonna, I'm gonna give it to uh, Coach Easy. Yeah, Coach Easy definitely. He, not, unbiased. Coach Easy definitely like he got the dance battle. But I don't know. It's probably the donut in the mouth that did it. Like, who got the donut in the mouth? That's not a donut. Coach Eason. I thought. Oh my yeah. god. Yeah, yeah. You yeah. thought that was his tongue? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> hey, bro. Yeah. <laughs> Top five. Top. Bro, look at the camera. <laughs> <laughs> oh, bro. I'm sorry. Oh, bro. Boy. bro. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. I can't see it now. Okay. Really Co- he said, well, because of the donut, not the top. Yeah. We're going to ask the producers to go ahead and get a still frame of that so we can all get a good laugh in <laughs> afterward. Uh, so one thing that, uh, that came up this week as well that we were thinking about is team movies, something that uh, oh, you all do every Friday night before the game, usually seeing uh, something current, you know, taking over a theater, enjoying some time with your teammates the night before the game. But other times, uh, if there's not a movie that the seniors may want to watch, coach may just dig into his bag of tricks or DVDs or Netflix password, whatever it may be, mm-hmm. um, to find something. What was the movie this past week and what was the verdict? Uh, we watched Coach Carter, Carter, right? Carter, Carter. Yeah, Coach so Carter. A, little, a little throwback. Yeah, what y'all think? I think Coach Sweeney. Watch Coach Carter. Like, that had to be, like, the first movie he ever watched. And he just based, like, his life principles and foundations <laughs> yeah. off the movie of Coach. Like, everything, like, I've ever heard Coach Sweeney say, maybe not be the exact thing, but it, like, falls in line with, like, mm. the way Coach Carter was, like, going about stuff, like, in the movie. And I've seen that movie a lot of times. But the fact that I've seen it, like, and knowing that Coach Sweeney's going to talk to us after the movie made me think, like, <laughs> yeah. 
Yeah. It ain't like how you do anything. It's how you do everything. And like just when I was watching the movie, I was just saying that stuff to him, like myself in that in my the, head. The meeting was actually shorter than what I thought it was gonna be from him have, saying I was like, bro, he got so many home. talking points in this movie. We about to be <laughs> I, here saying, I thought we were gonna be here forever. Yeah. So looking ahead to this week, one thing that's happening uh, this week is we return to Death Valley and return to Memorial Stadium. Right before kickoff, C.J. Spiller is going to be inducted in the Clemson Ring of Honor. So he'll have his name up on the stadium at Memorial Stadium. Uh, You know, C.J. and I are relatively the same age, so obviously I've got, you know, vivid memories of watching him play. You guys a little bit younger. Um, How how much have you all watched highlights and games of C.J.? Did you all watch him growing up? I mean, how aware are you all of what a certified dude CJ was when he played at Clemson? I ain't seen him growing up, but I seen some crazy highlights. Yeah, yeah. I'm with Peyton before. Yeah. Some I got cra- the same thing. Like, he got some crazy tape. Like, I ain't never seen him tape like that. Like, when he was on the sideline and the dude was just, like, standing there, he was like, poop, poop. Like, I didn't even know he could <laughs> run. Yeah. Like, I didn't even know he could run straight line that fast. Like, you see him, like, he... He was low key kind of swole like he was here, but you see him like leaving folks like, like you're not supposed to like run past another man that call himself playing college football <laughs> at that speed. Like he was really doing that, but yeah, I didn't know I didn't know much about him like growing up. But like when I got to Clemson, I seen all his highlights. I was like, yeah, he was real. I don't know how I, I didn't know who he was. And yeah, he was like, a track all American, but you're I mean he doesn't he didn't look see, like a sprinter. It's not like he yeah, was rail thin or anything like that. Sliding. That's crazy. Yeah. Sliding. Nah, that's big though. The ring of honor, that's like that's the highest regard of like a Clemson football. Well, not even a Clemson football player. But yeah, that's crazy. Just incredibly well deserved. That'll be a great yeah, moment yeah, pregame. Uh, we encourage the fans get in your seats early before kickoff. After the team uh, comes running down the hill and right before kickoff, we'll get to unveil CJ's name up on uh, the Memorial we'll Stadium that. facade. So sure, be a part man. of that. We'll be will be a great moment. So looking ahead to this game, um, not asking about the opponent specifically, but for you all. Kind of what's a, a focus for you this week and for the rest of the season on something where you're trying to improve or, or something that's really on your mind or on your heart as you go into this week? I think that I think I could probably speak for us like as a room, just a defensive line, just make sure that like, we main cont- consistency. You know, we put two games, uh, we stack two really good games like up front together as far as like you know just doing our basic job, stopping the running and fading the quarterback. I think as long as we keep doing that as a room. Uh, all the all the schemey stuff, you know, offensive scheme and defensive scheme going against each other will fall into place. We just had that one to, you know what I'm saying? And keep that mindset and just don't get tired doing the little things. You know, you get get into a long season. We're going into week week eight now, right? This is yeah. be game game seven, but it'll be week eight. <clears throat> and you're going through a long season and you don't really want to forget like all the things that you did to get there and just, you know, who you doing it with. Like these these are my boys, these might be very well be my last season that I get to play with both of them with them uh, being on their last years, possibly. And so just, just taking that into account. Peyton, DeMonte? So I would say recovery in general. I feel like recovery, we got to step it up in general because it's the eighth week and plays are starting to stack up, even more competitions getting even better. And if we're, if we're not recovering, bro, it's, it's catching up to us now. <laughs> so... We need to be recovering on a daily basis to get better for the next game, for sure. Devontae? Yeah, I, I agree with Peyton. Recovery is big because, like, like, being here five years, your knees and everything just start clicking. <laughs> and <you> start popping. <laughs> and just click. <laughs> everything get the tripping. So you got to make sure you stay on top of it, scratching and all that stuff. So, yeah. So before we wrap up, I want to make sure we're trying to get you guys some followers. Where can Clemson fans and our listeners find you guys on social media? Peyton Page 55 <laughs> on everything. You feel me? Okay, so y'all can go follow me on Instagram. My Instagram is peterwoods.11, just my name spelled out. And then on Twitter, I think I'm like 35pwoo. Might have changed that. That's old. Like, that's from like high school. I wore number 35 in middle school, but it's 35pwoo. And then my two social media handles, y'all can follow. Mine is just cutty underscore 19 on Instagram. And, uh, Twitter you, X, you can find me at oh, K, it's at K Part Demonte. All right, that'll wrap us up on another special in-season edition of Two Right Turns. Make sure to like and subscribe everywhere that you listen. Make sure to watch us on YouTube and Clipson Plus, and we'll see you on another edition of the Two Right Turns podcast.